controversial White Helmets group, praised by the West as a rescue team working in Syria, has been guaranteed continued support by the British Prime Minister, Theresa May. Last week, the Trump administration froze their US funding. With thousands of civilian lives at risk, will the Prime Minister step up, pledge the government to plug the funding shortfall that now exists, and ensure these heroic rescue workers can continue their work? Yeah. Prime Minister. Can I say to the Honourable Gentleman, we recognise the very important and valuable work that the White Helmets are doing. They are, as he says, doing this in horrendously difficult conditions. They are incredibly brave to be continuing that work. We do support them. We will continue to support them. And my right honourable friend, the International Development Secretary, will be looking at the level of that support in the future. Well, the issue was raised today during Prime Minister's questions. That's the weekly session where MPs from across the chamber can ask the Prime Minister a series of uh, questions. And that came, uh, that particular one about the white helmets came from a member of the Labour Party. And uh, in particular, uh, asking the question because, of course, the US government have decided to cut their funding for the white helmets. And so, uh, as the question went, what would the British government be looking to do to plug that gap? Now, it's interesting that the US government have taken that decision because just a couple of months ago in March, the White Helmets and their senior leaders were in Washington taking high-level meetings with US government officials who were praising them for their work and uh, praising them for their uh, life-saving activities, as it's been uh, put. But not everybody uh, is a fan of the White Helmets. There have been repeated allegations that they have been... Uh, linked to al-Qaeda tied groups and that they have been uh, on front lines where groups like al-Nusra have been at present working hand in hand and also that some of their uh, rescue missions have been nothing but stunts to try to win the world's sympathy. Now, the White Helmets continue to maintain that they're purely a humanitarian group and that they ha have no links to any extremist groups or the like. Uh, but it's uh, interesting. They were founded by a former British Army soldier, a former mercenary by the name of James Mesurier. And uh, so it seems that with this latest pledge by the UK government to look into plugging that funding gap, the links between Britain and the White Helmets look set to continue. Let's bring in Mike Raddy, he's a political analyst and co-editor of the online media site BS News. Very good evening to you, Mike. Uh, what, what's Britain's interest in funding supporting the White Helmets? Do we know? Well, they're not just a propaganda construct, as John Pilger says. They're, they're, this is a concept that will be used, is being used again, not just in Syria. Um, we've seen White Helmets in Venezuela and as far afield as the Philippines. Uh, and they're there to provide a false pretext. That's essentially what they're there for. It's, it, it is propaganda. Um, and the people that we spoke to in Aleppo last year, they called them Al Nusra's Fire Brigade. Um, most people had not actually heard of them. Uh, but this year in Aleppo, we heard one man say that they were bad actors. So, so they have a reputation of, being, of doing the staged rescues. Um, but the revelations from people in East Ghouta that were, have been liberated just, just in the last past month um, shed more nefarious light on this group. Um, one, one eyewitness that spoke to Vanessa Beely actually said that uh, the White Helmets and other Islamist factions had come to them, uh, forced them off their land, taken stolen money, stolen their possessions, um, and then kept them confined in, in a building. And then at one point actually came up to them and said, be cautious, there's going to be a chemical weapons attack. Uh, and then uh, the white helmets, the actual white helmets, actually attacked them with chemical weapons, with, with poisonous gases. Um, th this is a new revelation, I think. I've, I've not heard of anything as, as serious as that um, in, the, in, you know, in the past two or three years. But um, this go just goes to show what we've actually been saying all along. Um, where you see the white helmets, you see Al Nusra, you see JSL Islam. They are occupying the same complexes, the same buildings, and they're working side by side. We also heard of a witness in, in East Ghouta that said um, 
there were three children trapped in a building, and because they weren't Al Nusra and they weren't a part of the terrorist factions, they were left. And the White Helmets were plead they were plead people were pleading with the White Helmets to come and rescue the children, and they didn't. So the the children were dragged out of the rubble um, by a group of women. Sadly, the the children's mother died because she wasn't pulled out in time. Um, but this just goes to show that this this is way more than just a, a, a propaganda. Uh, affair. That's what it was originally, I think, but it's now become much more serious. And you just look at what they achieved last month with the uh, cruise missile attack. That was their film in, in April or, or March of uh, the alleged chemical weapons attack. There was no chemical weapons. Um, Robert Fisk and, and Pearson Sharp uh, spoke to doctors and witnesses on the scene, and, and they said there was no chemical attack. So that is the, the power of the White Helmets and, and the power of propaganda. But I think the British people have something serious to consider here. Um, unless they've been sealed in a hermetically sealed bubble of the main, mainstream media, or they haven't read a book in their lives, they must have their doubts about this group now. There's been enough written about them. I think Vanessa Beely, Cory Morningstar and Rick Sterling have done the most work in exposing them over the last two or three years. Um, but we have laws in this country about financing terrorism, and a person commits an offence if they provide money and if they know or they have reason to suspect that that money is going to be used for terrorism. Now, most people, or a, gro a growing group, of, a majority of people in the country, should at least be suspecting that this group isn't what it claims to be, and therefore uh, is in breach of anti-terror legislation. So I think the people in England should, and Britain should be asking themselves, do they need to go on a, some kind of tax strike and we start withholding funds from the government because they're going to find themselves on the wrong side of the law uh, just by paying taxes. It's a very, very strange situation for Theresa May to put us all in. You say that there's enough evidence out there now, outside of the mainstream media, of course, you won't see this in the mainstream media, enough evidence outside of it for people to be suspicious now. Do you think that's in any way connected to the US decision to reduce funding for the White Helmets? Why suddenly are they not the US darling? It's very odd. I mean, the thing is that the, the evidence of the White Helmets and their, their affiliations with, with uh, terrorist groups uh, and the fact that they're armed and sectarian, that's not been um, collected by undercover investigators on the ground. That's been produced by themselves, by White Helmets operatives taking selfies with Al-Qaeda and with Al-Nusra, taking selfies with them with guns, taking selfies with them um, standing on the bodies of Syrian Arab Army soldiers. Um, so, so most of the body of evidence, and it is a mountain of evidence now, is actually provided by the White Helmets themselves. And I, you have to admit that the, uh, the Americans might have seen this by now. You know, it's hard to, to ignore it. You know, I think that the, uh, the, the British politicians and, and the, the gentleman that asked the question today in, in, in uh, PMQs, that's willful ignorance not to know this because it, it's impossible for educated people in this country, especially the educated politicians who should know better, who do have access to all sorts of information that normal citizens are not privy to, they must know this. They must know that this group is not just linked with terrorist uh, groups, but is a terrorist group itself. Um, just one, one other point that I, I heard as well from Vanessa's test, the eyewitness testimonies. Uh, there was one gentleman that actually saw them manufacturing um, molten plastic that they then fired in a hell cannon, and it went up, and it was effectively it was it was like like napalm. It landed on people, and some people were killed. Some people were really I badly. I do apologise, Mike. That I was just trying to let you finish themselves. off there, but we, we've run out of time. So very quickly, say many thanks, Mike Raddy, political analyst, co-editor of BS News. Thanks. Even quicker outro this time. Bye.